Chapter 12. Back Home Boredom It had only been a few days since leaving Splatsville, which was a fairly fun trip, although she was absolutely sure her dad and brother had more fun than her. The only thing that made her think that was because of how many times she'd been nudged or shaken awake by Hope in the morning. It did remind her of how nice it was to have her own room back home. She met up with her aunt and Molly only once or twice during the actual trip and only because Molly wanted to show Whimsy a bakery and her old workplace. Whimsy had enjoyed getting to see what the businesses were like in Splatsville, which weren't too different from shops in Nicopolis. They were more crowded, though. When they'd left, everyone had given their usual goodbyes to Phoenix, ending with her father saying his usual I love yous, like he did to most people he cared about. Whimsy wasn't sure, but it looked like that completely stumped Phoenix, Whimsy didn't really get it, but she didn't pay much attention either. Neither had her dad, considering they had to board the train. Meeting Zazara and Celine had been nice, although Whimsy didn't say much to them because she didn't know them as well as Hope did. They both seemed kind enough from what she'd gathered from the brief couple hours they'd spent together. Being home was very nice, though. Much quieter, less to do, no longer sharing a room with Hope again. It was especially nice when Hope darted out the door at a ridiculous hour in the morning to go run to meet with Stella, who he was late to meet again. And Whimsy had almost not heard him clatter around in the kitchen. No being shaken awake, no being shouted at or hearing thuds from the living room. When she woke up, it was the usual routine, laying in bed staring at the ceiling for five minutes, debating with herself on whether or not to get up. Then she finally decided to do it, and wandered to the bathroom, went through her morning routine, and then headed to the kitchen, where her father was writing something in some kind of journal at the table. He was muttering something to himself, but nothing Whimsy could hear. Whimsy stared at him for a few minutes, trying to make out what he was saying, but the words got muddled in her brain, too sleepy to focus enough. Dad, what are you mumbling about? Whimsy blinked. Gar immediately jumped and looked up from what he was doing with a wide eye, putting one hand over his chest like at least one of his hearts was having an attack, dropping the pen he'd been holding. Whimsy? His voice betrayed his look of fear, sounding completely calm. Who else would it be? Whimsy took a few steps forward. Hope ran out the door already, so, like, what? The ghost of hope. Gar lowered his hand from his chest, shaking his head with a sigh. You were grumbling about something, though. What? Whimsy moved a bit closer to the table, trying to get a look at what Gar was writing. He immediately moved his arm over the notebook, covering whatever it was he'd been scribbling on it. Nothing important. Does it have to be important for me to want to know? Whimsy tipped her head to the side. I guess not, but it was something boring. He narrowed his eye. Given the fact that he didn't want to repeat it, Whimsy doubted that was true. Right, uh-huh. She tried to emphasize the I don't believe you tone in her voice. What are you writing? Like a perfectly timed machine, the minute the last word left her mouth, Gar had shut the journal, staring at Whimsy with a neutral expression. A few notes, nothing special. He dismissed the question. So you were in the kitchen, by yourself, muttering something boring and writing some very regular and uninteresting notes? Whimsy gave him a look of disbelief. Yes, he nodded. You expect me to believe this... why? Whimsy waved her hand in a circle. Because I'm old. Gar shifted to rest his head in one of his hands. I'm so old and boring and mundane. Whimsy huffed, entirely unimpressed by her father throwing words she'd said to him once, in a joking manner, back in her face. I do nothing interesting ever, only very uncool things. Something, something, budgeting. Gar was looking at the ceiling. Finances. He paused again. 
chores. You're the biggest and worst liar of all time. Whimsy walked over to pull out a chair across from him and sit in it. Do I get a gold medal for that? Gar grinned. No, absolutely not. Whimsy folded her arms, as if he was insulting her. Aww. Gar sounded genuinely sad. Do you want a gold medal for being a liar? Whimsy squinted. Yes, of course. I'd hang it on my wall next to the marigold. Gar was saying, a small smile still on his face. It'd be my pride and joy to be the number one of... something. Yeah, but you'd be the number one worst at something. Whimsy put her elbows up on the table. Still number one. Gar held up one finger. Whimsy leaned forward to push his finger back down. Gar gave her a playful frown. You never let me have anything, he said, shaking his head. If I did, your ego would be too big. She sat back down in her chair. How do you know that for sure? He raised an eyebrow. Just a feeling, Whimsy said. Would you say it's just an inkling? Stop talking. Okay. Gar moved his gaze toward the window. That was maybe the worst joke you've made lately. Get better. She huffed. Yeah. He agreed, still staring away from her. What are you looking at? Whimsy asked, only to see Gar turn his head slightly to look at her with a very particular look in his eye. And don't say nothing. If you say nothing, I'm telling Hope to dock some of your cool points. Just looking at the sky, trying to figure out what I'm doing today, he half mumbled. What about the chores or something something budgeting? Whimsy drummed her fingers on the table. Gar gave her an unimpressed look, but didn't say anything. How about calling Miss Teals or Cereal? Whimsy tilted her head. Cereal? Gar looked confused. You know. Whimsy stretched her arms above her head. Gar seemed lost. Loops. Whimsy clasped her hands together. Oh my god. Gar immediately set a hand over his forehead with a deep sigh. So, we get it now? Whimsy asked. You have got to stop calling them that. Gar lifted his head back up. What else do I call them? Whimsy lowered her arms. By their name? Gar sounded almost exasperated. Whimsy shrugged. Okay. Clownfish that- No! Gar spoke the word quickly, before he adjusted himself and resumed a more slow and calm tone. Just call them Minnow. One day, I'll find a nickname for them, Gabby. One you'll agree to. She glared at him. Anyway, the question? I'm fairly certain they're busy. Gar looked up at the ceiling. How do you know? Whimsy tipped her head to the side. I am capable of texting them, Whimsy. He sighed. Sometimes I wonder. Whimsy scrunched her nose. Gar had an unamused expression on his face. What are they doing? Whimsy patted the table with her hands to a beat. Maybe you can join them? They're, uh... He had a look that told Whimsy instantly he was about to be indirect. Spending time together. Okay, so why don't you go join them? She asked again. Gar had an awkward frown. I'm not up for it. Up for what, though? Whimsy pressed. He held her gaze for a while before speaking. They're playing video games, he said. You could totally go play video games with them. Whimsy held up her hands. You just gotta try. 
I think you'd like some. Hmm. He definitely didn't believe her. I'm serious. There are some nice relaxing ones about building that I think you'd like to play. Whimsy grinned at him. The game they're playing is... He seemed like he was tossing something around in his head. From what I've heard, not a relaxing type of game. So it's like, story-based, or puzzles, or fighting, or what? Whimsy tapped her foot on the floor. A mix of a few things. Gar brought his gaze back down to the table. But you could watch them play? You're really good at just sitting somewhere and watching. Whimsy smirked. I'll pass. Gar shifted a bit to pick up the pen he dropped earlier to twirl it around in his fingers. You'd pass on spending time with the people you follow around like a lost shrimp? Whimsy gasped in awe. In favor of what? Organizing your dinner plates? Writing mysterious pieces of things in a mysterious book that you won't let your dear sweet daughter look at? I don't follow them around like a lost shrimp. He immediately felt the need to clarify. Also, yes. So, so, if I look in the cabinet, will all the plates be stacked neatly and nicely? Whimsy asked, going to stand up. I do, and put away the dishes. When have they ever not been? He wrinkled his nose at her, in the way he did when he wanted to ask a question. The one time you were sick and let Hope do it? Whimsy smiled. Yeah. He hissed the word. He rushed through that, though. There were other things to do. I still have faith in him. The final test will be when you leave for a week or something, and he has to do chores and cook. Whimsy took on an ominous tone. I still have to teach you both how to do that. He closed his eye. I know how to make a killer batch of muffins. I think I can handle making something else. Hope is the one that deserves most of your concerns. Whimsy stood up. Mm Mm-hmm. He hummed, tapping the pen on the table. By the way, you don't have anything to do today, right? Nope. Whimsy shook her head. Friends are busy. Don't really want to socialize today anyway. You know... Talking to me is technically socializing, right? He tipped his head to the side. You sound like my sociology teacher. Whimsy gave him a thumbs down. Just being honest, Gar shrugged. Wait a minute, why do you ask? Whimsy squinted at him. You want to help me with some chores? Gar stood up with a smile, lifting the journal from the table. Whimsy let out the loudest groan she could muster. Aw, you don't want to do laundry? Gar walked past her, lightly holding his hand over her head, but not setting it down, before he continued walking away. No! Whimsy shouted, hopping up and following him. Neither do I. Gar continued walking toward his room, slipping in to set the journal and pen down before immediately spinning back around and walking out into the hallway, shutting the door behind him. Okay, so we agree. Whimsy squinted at him. It appears so, he nodded, looking up at the ceiling as if he was thinking. So, are you making me do it anyway? Whimsy put her hands on her hips, turning her head slightly to the side. Gar looked as if he was tossing the idea around in his head. There was a slight grin on his face that Whimsy didn't exactly like. He eventually finally looked down at Whimsy with a sigh. No, I won't make you do it. He shook his head. But... There it is. Whimsy folded her arms. But... Gar said again, staring at her. What do you propose we do instead? That was... Actually, not a bad question. Whimsy didn't actually have any real ideas for what they'd do together. She hadn't had anything in mind at all since, really, she just woke up. She blinked at him, hard. 
usually when it was just her and Garb, they had a pool of a select few things to choose from. Things like doing puzzles, or playing card games Garb knew and Whimsy didn't, or experimenting with baking, though that required some thought beforehand for ingredients, or they'd play music together, or they'd watch something. None of those things sounded particularly interesting at the moment. Gar was still watching her, and waiting patiently for a response while she tried to think of something. She didn't feel like going out of the apartment either, to hike or whatever they could do. Generally, she didn't really want to dedicate her time to anything that required effort, which meant she would either say, I don't know, which would make Gar try to suggest all the thoughts she had and didn't like. Or she could say she didn't want to do anything, but that might leave her dad alone, with nothing he can really do to occupy his time. She would feel bad if she ditched him to go sit around her room. An easy route would be to pick something they usually did that was very simple, and something Gar was interested in, so hopefully he'd do most of the talking or whatever it was, except her father was only ever interested in a few things, namely lights, which weren't interesting to her in the slightest. She never understood how he could talk about different types of lights for so long, no matter how hard she tried. I give up. Let's do laundry. She sighed in defeat. She needed to get some done anyway. It was probably better to do it now rather than later. All right, if that's what you want. You were thinking pretty hard about it. Gar smirked, walking toward the laundry room. Because I really don't want to do chores, but I also really don't want to do anything else right now. She followed him in. If it were my choice, I'd go and lay on my bed and stare at the ceiling all day. It is your choice. You can go do that if you want. He said, as he took a few things that were in the dryer out. She guessed he'd done a bit before she'd even woken up. Which didn't surprise her, because he always woke up way earlier than her and started working on things. Yeah, and what? Leave you by yourself? Whimsy walked around him to lean on the washing machine. I've been by myself before, Whimsy. It'd be fine. He shook his head lightly. Am I not allowed to be left unsupervised or something? Nope, Whimsy said, folding her arms as Gar shooed her away from the washing machine so he can move the clothes over. Why's that? Gar asked, glancing at her briefly. You might reach critical levels of boredom and explode, and not in the hope way, Whimsy said. Mmm, I see. Gar gave a small, huffy laugh as he finished starting the washing machine and dryer again, turning to lift up the laundry basket and move it to somewhere where they could fold things. Whimsy followed him as he found a good place to set it down, starting to work on folding some things. She picked up one of her father's hoodies and started to fold it, looking up at him as she did so. So is this, like, the only one you have left? She looked up at him. No. He sounded confused. Why would it be? Minnow and Tills keep taking them from you. Whimsy raised her eyebrows. Almost every time they come over, they take something of yours. I don't get it at all. Neither do I, he sighed, though it looked like he did understand to some extent. It fell silent for a few moments, mostly just some shifting around from the clothes. Then Gar tilted his head down a bit. So, I've been meaning to ask, since we've been back, have you caught up with Snat? Whimsy set the thing she'd been folding down immediately. Yes, unfortunately, I have caught up with Snapper. Why do you say unfortunately? Gar frowned. You remember that someone I talked to you about, like, several months ago? The mystery person from school? Whimsy wasn't sure she wanted to admit this to her dad, but it didn't matter. Gar looked like he was trying to remember what she was talking about, but just seemed more lost the longer he thought about it. The time I came to you for advice about, like, she struggled. A crush? She spoke quietly, as if someone else was in the apartment and would hear her. 
Oh, right. Gar immediately glanced off to the side, looking half embarrassed. Probably because of how he'd been virtually no help at all back then. Whimsy still couldn't forget about how little help he'd been when she came to him for advice. She still felt like it might have been wiser to go to anyone else. But it's not like she had a whole lot of people to turn to. Except maybe Piranha. Piranha would have been a better choice. Well, guess who that was? Whimsy waved her hands out. He blinked at her, not saying a word. Snapper, Dad. It's Snapper. She looked up at him with an unimpressed look. I know. He didn't sound like he actually had a clue. Now guess you formed a new crush on someone else over the summer. Whimsy folded her arms. Gar narrowed his eye. Also, Snapper. She growled. So guess has to watch her crush obsess over their crush for the next entire school year when it starts back up. He kept his mouth shut. Me. She shook her head. Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry, Mims. Gar used his typically apologetic tone. I should have seen it coming. Like, some new kid moved in around where Snapper lives, so she's been sort of obsessed with them. I don't get it, but whatever. Whimsy finally started folding the clothes again. You can't say you should have seen it coming if there was no way to know. Gar shrugged lightly, pushing a neat stack of clothes back from where he'd set it. It's whatever. I'll get over it eventually. Whimsy took one of the last few things from the basket. If you need to talk, though, I'm here. Gar offered. I'm not that bothered. Snapper can do what they want. Whimsy set the last of the folded clothes down. Gar nodded, moving to lift the basket up. I mostly just don't want to think about it. Whimsy took a pile into her arms. I'll worry about it when school starts or something. Alright. Gar gave her a quick glance before he picked up the stack of clothes. Whimsy walked away for a brief moment to put away the clothes she just folded while Gar did the same. She took a second to try and derail her thoughts about Snapper. It actually maybe did bother her that her best friend and crush was now interested in someone else. And that the only time Whimsy had met with them after her trip to Splatsville was full of talking about someone who just moved in. And that there was no way that she was going to make it through the next semester without hearing about it. She'd rather not think about that right now, though. She shook her head as violently as she could, as she put the last of the things up. Then took a deep breath, walking off to go back to her father, wherever he was. Of course, he was in his room, fiddling with something on a desk. Hey, Dad, she said from his doorway, and he immediately turned to her, almost in a jumpy way. Whimsy? He stared at her. You know how I said I didn't want to do anything? Whimsy tilted her head. I recall. He nodded. Forget I said that. You want to go for a hike? Whimsy asked, leaning against the door. Gar gave her a small smile. Sure. Okay, then. I'm gonna get ready. Whimsy gave a thumbs up before walking back toward her room. Wait, right now? Gar called, peeking his head from the door. When else? Whimsy looked over her shoulder. He stayed quiet and closed his mouth before ducking back into his room.